everybody. Welcome to Compliance Live. I'm Amanda Hosenfeld. I'm Kaylin Kafka. Kaylin, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. First show of 2020. Our first full show of 2020. Right, yeah. right. I've, I've deemed 2020 as the year of good things. Good. Yeah. I, I hope that's true. Copyrighted Amanda Hosenfeld <laughs> 2020. <laughs> 2020. <laughs> right. So today's show um, is one that's close to your heart. Mm -hmm. um, we are going to talk be talking about retaliation and culture. Uh, and we're going to start off by talking about what retaliation is. It's it's a hot button issue right now. Very big. It's really big in the news. Yeah. Retaliation whistleblowing is in the news. And we want to give you these resources so that you can, if you're an employee, you can feel comfortable. And then also if you're an employer, that you can protect your organization. Mm -hmm. um, and your staff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think that's that's a big piece here. So it's like retaliation can ruin the culture within your organization. How do you prevent that from happening? Right. So not even talking about it from a legal, my company should not have done this. It was a legal yeah, right. um, point of view, but also culturally. Because we all know about that stuff, right? Like, yeah. You know, I think that's in a lot of our trainings. Uh, you, I'm out the chair. <laughs> I know I'm, I'm on your good side. Today. What can and can't happen to you as an employee legally? So we hear about that in our annual trainings, uh, but I think it's maybe not often talked about. There is some subtle retaliation that can go on too, uh, just on a, like coworker to coworker level. That's not necessarily like legally protected, right? Um, that can ruin a workplace. So I, I worked in a company one time where we talked a lot about what you can do or can or cannot do versus should or shouldn't do. Great comparison. Yeah, so you cannot retaliate against somebody for any kind of discriminatory or diversity or equal mm -hmm. opportunity uh, kind of commission. Right, so like religion, uh, ethnicity, anything that has to do with like if someone um, refused any sort of sexual advance. Right, any kind of harassment. Yeah, you, you can't retaliate against them because they didn't let you like brush on their shoulder. Exactly, but you also, on the, on the other side, that's the can and can't, right? You can't retaliate against anybody for bringing up those concerns, but you should not retaliate against anybody for bringing up any concerns. <laughs> I think that um, any reporting mechanism an organization has, whether it just be kind of an open door policy uh, with the HR department or management or something um, as helpful as a hotline or an online reporting source can be, like the reputation of that reporting mechanism can be destroyed through one bad example or like one bad story about retaliation. Yeah, and it doesn't even have to be like hit the legal definition no. of discrimination or harassment it's it's anything yeah so um just to clarify things retaliation can include any negative job action so some examples of that are demotion mm -hmm. discipline firing salary uh, adjustments um, or like a shift reassignment mm -hmm. those are examples of a negative purposeful job action um, and we were talking back and forth it's, those are really drastic obvious yes. examples other people see it happening exactly um, but retaliation can also be really subtle too yeah. right and you were telling me about uh, example in the hotline that you experience yeah we hear we hear about retaliation a lot within the hotline um, just different calls within the different industries that we we service so uh, an example just a, this is one that I've even heard like multiple times but broad example within the healthcare industry say that Tammy had to call off because her son was sick one day and as a result of that everyone else on Tammy's team and her unit had to work later than they otherwise would have to to compensate for her workload uh, when Tammy returned from work or from from her leave with her son back to work she noticed that like the, the environment of teamwork that her team used to have for her and with her was gone whereas normally her team would 
maybe like watch out for her patients if she was helping out answer some call bells yeah. they were ignoring all her patients call bells and you know didn't answer someone's request for a juice or something like making her job harder than it was before she called out right so notice of making the work environment noticeably uncomfortable mm -hmm. for someone yeah and i think that that's subtle maybe management doesn't see that like as a manager i would see if a scheduler made her work on made tammy work on her birthday but, but you might not see somebody like a click right or something as a, as a manager well depending on you know your organization yeah, and yeah, how many people are in mm -hmm. uh, in it and how often you're in the office but i know that uh nick who's been on the show who's my direct manager he wouldn't see if a couple of people told uh employees not to talk to me right for a day because I had you know made their job in, inadvertently made their job a, a little bit yeah. harder and like while super observant he's super Nick is super observant like I think that is just so subtle and um, based on individuals that like it'd yes. be hard for him to tune it on that it's not like you know somebody uh, messed with my pay or you know, took some job responsibilities that are mine away from me. Noticeably changing your role. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so I think that these subtle things probably happen quite often. And from the employer's perspective, someone in compliance or HR who, you know, should be and is looking out for, for these things, those are the hard ones to find. Yeah, the, the subtle covert ones. But they're the ones that really ruin employees perception of their workplace. Um, I mean, of course, if my pay was decreased in retaliation, that would make me very upset and it would ruin things. But it's, uh, I think the personal relationships are really important to protect and preserve too, but a lot of retaliation happens within them. Yeah, and it's it, it makes your, because your culture can change with subtle, like shade like that, it, it makes your company or can make it an uncomfortable place to work, which changes the ethos and it changes the way uh, it, it, you might not see it, but it affects outward like a ripple, like right. it affects the culture as a whole. Um, and that's why acting on retaliation is, or reports of retaliation mm -hmm. is, is so important so that people don't see your uh, your culture as like toxic yeah exactly yeah. and I think that's a good thing you bring up you might not see it right away but you will see it eventually and then you'll wonder how it happened you know so like for example we do um, very regular employee satisfaction surveys here yes and within that we talk about a lot about culture of course because it's very important to us but we talk about peer-to-peer -peer relationships like how well do you think things are going within your department and stuff like that um, so maybe like quarter to quarter, you're going to, because of something a little more covert, retaliation, you'll see this decrease in kind of the peer relationships sector, uh, and, and you didn't see it happening. So you're like, where, why did we just decrease 50% in this area? What right. are we doing wrong? Last quarter, everybody loved our culture and our yeah. peers and, you know, working together in this quarter, you know, things are really bad. And I think that, um, I know that we're kind of segueing into like, well, what can I do to make sure this doesn't happen in my workplace? Um, taking the pulse of your company's culture is important. And doing that often, I think, is even more important than, of course, like do it at least annually. Uh, at the very minimum. At the bare minimum. And not maybe not company-wide, but even like team-wide. Yeah. Like if your company does an annual survey, mm -hmm. hey, great that's one more survey than some companies yep. do but even on small teams or within divisions if your company is not doing it you do it that's right and i think that's that's a fantastic point because culture is not just company based like you can have a company culture but also have a like a divisional culture a, cult, a team culture yeah. like maybe you know um i work on a really small team of three people just like my immediate position. So our culture is very special and unique, is even in comparison to our company-wide culture, right? which is really like well-preserved and protected. So do your culture pulse surveys 
if you're just a manager and you want to make sure that you're like handling your team's needs, um, do them just for your team and do yeah. them quarterly. Like if you could do them quarterly, that's great. And but make sure that your teams, your divisions, your company as a whole under knows and understands that retaliation is not going to be tolerated. Right. That, um, you can't make somebody angry and then they take it out on your work. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, we we hear a lot about retaliation again in the hotline. So oftentimes our callers are very scared. They're scared to share this information with us. We hear a lot of like, well, what if Tom finds out he's going to fire me? And they're, they're saying to me, what if I'm retaliated against? It's really helpful within your reporting mechanisms if you could share your retaliation policy verbatim with within those mechanisms, whether that be kind of on the advertisements maybe for you put those. it on a poster. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, either like a here's where you find the policy or just even if it's a simple sentence like we don't tolerate retaliation or maybe it's the full policy. You know? That's what um, ours is. A compliance yeah. line, it's the full policy. Yeah, but it needs to be there. So make it I mean, listen to me preaching about policy. policy. <laughs> did we change places? Right, right? We did. What is this? I should be on that side of the table. Right? Um, but, but that one is so important. Make sure your hotline has it. Make sure it's on your online reporting. Make sure it's in your policy book. Like, if you ever take 10 pages, just layer it in there. So you brought up a really interesting point because uh, if, you, if you're a, one of our hotline clients, there are, are several of you that put your retaliation yeah. policy in the greeting. Mm -hmm. um, we answer the phone and you're protected from any retaliation is one of the first, or something of like that kind. Yeah, it is one of the first things that we say in, in the greeting. There's also um, instances in the adaptive interview where our call center agents uh, notice that it's getting to a, a point of you're, you're worried about uh, retaliation yeah. and they are required to read right. a retaliation statement that mm -hmm. comes directly from our clients usually their handbook or their policy so we see that a lot a lot and I think even if we're not required to read it because a lot of our our clients do say you know read this in the beginning of every call we want all of our callers to know in in full detail we don't retaliate um, having it there is a resource for us or for your hotline vendor staff to use is really helpful because it just helps show the caller that the organization cares and that the organization appreciates them doing the right thing and takes their concern seriously. Right. And and it gives the caller a sense of confidence in the process. Um, because a lot of times we hear like, well this they're not gonna do anything about this anyway. I don't know why I just like jeopardized my job. To tell them about something that they probably won't even handle. right they're just going to brush it under the rug yeah so, so the more verbiage that you can provide to give them confidence um it, it's helpful and i think that it positively contributes to your organization's culture and how your reporting mechanisms are viewed so we talked about having it posted. We talked about, we say it, or your hotline, we suggest that whoever you use for your hotline, you know, gives that information. Is it, it are we overemphasizing this or can you overemphasize a retaliation policy? Um, it, it feels like from a cultural standpoint, it, it necessarily could be a good thing, right? Yeah. We, we want you to know that you, whether you're looking at your work ID card, whether you're, right. you know, logging into your homepage for the first time and it pops up that our company is serious about protecting our employees. Mm -hmm. And so like we, we have like a saying here, compliance line cares, and that's not just compliance line cares about its clients or, you know, who we serve and protect, but about our employees as well. And the fact that we talk about retaliation a lot kind of, Proves that you know just yeah. lives helps helps us live up to that value as an organization. It's not necessarily a scary thing. No, it, that we have this available and right. advertised yeah. for our employees. It's more of like a comfort thing. Yeah, instead of like, oh, I better mind my p's and q's because right. someone can tell me and they won't get in trouble for it. Um, just like if I need help, I can get help and I will not get in trouble for asking for help. You right. know, um, but I, I can see how. 
an organization or someone, a manager, someone kind of like deciding to or how to distribute this retaliation message could think, well, we don't want to, you know, lead people into thinking that we're going to retaliate against them by like talking about this retaliation policy thing. That's not often how I see it received. Right. Yeah. When it's provided. And in, I'm about to like blow your mind, segue into this thing, but it's also all about how you train it. Oh, is it? What? <laughs> it always <laughs> is. We should know that by now. It's always about how you train your employees, uh, not only how to use the policy and how to use your hotline and things, but you train your your culture. Right. And it's it's in everything that you do, and it's in it's in every meeting that you have, right. every interaction, every interaction with every peer or manager or vendor, mm -hmm. and if you are training culture as opposed to this specific policy piece of information, then it, it becomes a part of your company. That's right. And then everyone just knows that it's, it's there to comfort you. Yeah. I was, oh, we were, we were trained to be empathetic. We were right. trained to, you know, care. We were trained, you know, how that we were trained that my company is not going to retaliate against me and give me a really bad shift. Yeah. Because I had to call out with a sick child. Right. And I think, like, outside of policy and training, um, how your organization can, you know, make people feel comfortable about not being retaliated against for sharing something important that's going on with the, within the organization that could potentially harm it uh, would be to have a way for them to report it. Yes. They need to know that they, you don't just want to hear about the time fraud that you want to hear about the retaliation too. That's a great point. Like if, if you see something, say something obviously, right. but if you say something and something else happens because you said something, don't put that on a poster because it wouldn't, <laughs> like it doesn't flow. Um, but the company should want to know about that too and should want to take action on that. So let's talk about a little bit about what a company can do if a employer receives a retaliation claim. So what does that look like? I get a retaliation claim on my desk in my inbox, however it comes in. Um, I think the, the first thing you should do, and this sounds so silly, but take it seriously. Yeah. So don't play it off just because, you know, in, in our early example, she was upset that her teammates don't have her back now and they used to. Well, like that's still retaliation. You know, it's not, something that is legally protected, um, but it's impacting this person's day to day. And the, what are the results of that as well? Like right. is there, you know, if it's a nursing situation, is there a, a, an effect to the patient? In this specific situation, there very well could be. Like what right. if that patient then wasn't called on in a timely manner? Of course, it's going to go back to that individual because she's in charge of them, but you could have prevented that by like promoting a, a workplace culture of you know inclusion and, and teamwork and right like we have a very similar here like when when our call volume is really high we all pitch yeah. in yep and it's a very similar thing if, if if you're not pitching in because you're trying to punish somebody who you know ate the, your sandwich accidentally <laughs> out of the refrigerator like it's um, those things are never ever good for culture and ultimately they're never going to be good for business either. They harm culture your first. Place. Yeah. Right. Ultimately. So I think take it seriously and investigate it. Um, I'm a firm believer in claims should always be investigated. I understand that sometimes you just don't have sufficient amount of information to fully investigate confidently say this was substantiated or unsubstantiated. Make a firm decision on what or did or did not happen. Mm -hmm. But either way, like, I think it should be looked into as, as far as it can be with the information provided. So the employees, what do they see when they see their employer fully investigating retaliation? Um, I think that it gives them, and this is just purely my opinion, but I, I think it gives them a sense of the reassurance, that piece of like, well, they care enough to listen to me and to look into it at, at the least. Um, I think that human nature, people aren't satisfied when they don't get the result that they want. So, yeah, yeah. But I think to some level it shows employees that, hey, we care about you enough to 
make sure that like this maybe this doesn't happen again I don't know if you can give that sense of reassurance to an employee but um, I think ultimately when you give some vague results of the investigation I know not many details can be uh, shared but like maybe here's an action plan we're going to make sure like we can at least assure you this and this won't happen again uh, it gives them some comfort some secure sense of security yeah and I think from an employer stand of standpoint you you can be general about yeah you know policies Absolutely. and announcements hey just as a reminder everybody this is our harassment policy this is our clean lunchroom yeah. policy just to make sure everybody is all on the same page we like to give these it doesn't have to be targeted you don't it doesn't have to say why you're yeah, sharing we got that. a report that yeah. said that somebody you know scheduled because like that could be retaliation exactly you know it's a so. it's a purposeful act that caused harm to somebody's work environment mm -hmm. so you know think about those things um, put out general policies and statements as reminders no targeting right regularly yeah so not as a result of something yeah exactly not always as a result. always remind people of your your you know policies obviously but, <laughs> but your uh, values as your well. values and your training and then I think um, so just like as a final tip those HR professionals and compliance professionals who in, interact with employees and actually get to speak with them saying when you when you're done hearing their story their their issue their problem that they're they're sharing with you telling them if you're retaliated against please tell me just saying those those words makes them feel like they'll have a place to turn if something happens to them absolutely yeah and then they're more likely to tell you about it if and when it does I'm excited to be back yeah me for too. the new year 2020 like this is a heavy topic to talk about because it is, it, it is in the news it's you know it's always it's pervasive it's always going to be top of mind but I think it's a good one to start everybody's new year off yeah right be kind to others yeah be kind it's a good it's a good message to start the year off with and um yeah, just because it's not legally protected doesn't mean it's not harmful right so uh really cool news Kaylin uh while everybody was out for vacation we figured out how to do like video conferencing and guests and what? all sorts of things yeah we like we can have friends on the show we can have friends that aren't even in this room that on the so show cool. yeah people can like webcam in from another computer oh they're in for a treat right yes we're in for a treat they're in for a treat so we're excited that all of that to say that we've got some great shows uh coming up uh i would absolutely be remiss to say to miss saying that mm -hmm. Mark from accounting uh, uh, would like everybody to know that this podcast is sponsored by Compliance Line. Uh, we thank Compliance Line for offering this platform to bring you valuable compliance and ethics information. We are all over the place. We are on <laughs> Twitter at Compliance Live. And we're on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and now YouTube woo, woo, at Compliance Line. So check us out. We got a ton, ton of content just scheduled just to come out. I am firing and at you. Yeah. So did you see um, uh, Calvin was on our, our show earlier? I missed it. You missed it. You missed Calvin. He talked about the Australian whistleblower oh, laws. Oh, I hate that I missed it. Um, we've got a, a, some cool episodes with our SDR, uh, Bria Washington. Whoa. She's she's upcoming. And we even have, a, a, we filmed a little thing, some need to know yeah. information about some um, long-term care facilities so changes keep, keep an eye out for those yeah. episodes I you said uh, we're all over the place earlier and I, I giggled because I thought you were going somewhere totally different where did you it. think I was going like we're scatterbrained and that like, too all over the place with our show but, uh, yeah no we are yeah. we are all okay. mentally all over the right. place but also <laughs> like we're social both. media <laughs> all, all over the place. all over the interwebs we're, we're, we're on the <laughs> Facebook or Graham or Twitter. Yeah, right. So follow us there. <laughs> Please like and subscribe. Uh, we appreciate your candid feedback. <laughs> I'm Amanda Hosenfeld. I'm Kaylin Cox. And stay compliant.